Hey, this is Ellis with The Verge checking out Instapaper for Android. When you open up Instapaper for Android, you'll notice that it looks a lot like Instapaper for iPhone, even though it's not made by Marco Arment himself. You'll see Read Later, Liked, Archive. You won't see Friends, which shows what your friends are reading, and you won't see the feature, which shows what uh, other people are reading that's popular on Instapaper. You also won't see Web, which uh, helps you find things online, and Search, which helps you search through your things. Uh, so from this screen, you can hit the plus sign to uh, add folders, and you can remove those folders just as easily using that pencil up there. If you want to dig further into the uh, settings menu while you're reading, you'll notice that it looks pretty much the same as the one on the iPhone. There's uh, margins, there's line spacing, there's text size, there's dark mode uh, for reading at night, there's brightness, and you have the uh, usual selection of fonts. When you go into Instapaper for Android settings menu, you'll see that most of the things you're accustomed to on iOS are here, like read later limits for how many articles you'll download locally. The most glaring omissions are there's no full screen in Instapaper for Android, and there's also no iBook style pagination where the page turns over, uh, which is a really important feature for a lot of people. So you can see that here when you're scrolling through an article you really don't have much of a choice besides to just swipe through it. And you also can't go full screen. So you see the top menu bar as well as these two bars down here. This one doesn't do anything since there aren't any settings menu for this specific screen. As you might expect, Instapaper has integration with the Android's share menu. So it pop down to Instapaper and you see saved. So there's no need to install a browser bookmarklet like you would on iOS. If you want to uh, copy a URL from another site, Instapaper on Android will not recognize that you have a URL pasted into your clipboard. Uh, the iOS version does do that, which is a nice feature. Instapaper for Android also works on 7-inch tablets and as you can see has a really similar interface to the iPad interface. It's just thinner as you can see into one column. If you're on a 10-inch tablet, they're actually more boxes since you have more screen real estate uh, to use just like on your iPad. So if you turn it into portrait orientation, the screen flips and it's a little narrower but you can browse through just like you'd be used to. Instapaper for Android costs $2.99 in Google Play, the Android App Store, and Barnes & Noble's Nook App Store. It's a pretty good 1.0 release, but it's still missing some of the key features that make reading using Instapaper so special, like sepia tone, full screen, pagination, which is huge, friend recommendations, and most of all, just the fact that the UI Chrome is stuck on the screen and you can't go full screen, which is really kind of the thing that Instapaper does best. We have been reassured by developer Mobilux that these features are coming and the app will soon be on par with its iOS counterpart. And until then, it's a better option than any of the other Instapaper clients for Android.